Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Coach Unfiltered. My name is Bissy Atkins. My name is Clara Teku, and this is Culture, Culture Unfiltered. Unfiltered. Yes, yes, yes. So today we are joined by an amazing soul, an amazing musician, like one of the best in Africa that's come out of Africa. And he goes by the name Ade Kunle Go. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Kunle said, Why am I so animated? Yeah. Um, I was trying to, you know, you know, like when a host is like hosting you to come on the show and they're hyping it up for the audience and be like, oh my gosh, AG baby, AG baby. I was trying to do the same thing, but virtually, you didn't feel it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Is it morning where you are? What part of the world are you in, please? I'm in Texas. Is it morning there? Oh, yeah. What, what oh, part of Texas are you in? Houston. Are you from Houston? No. Nah, oh, from okay. Houston. You're from where? <laughs> From Lagos. I know that. I am from Dallas. That's why I asked. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes, yes. I think it's because you're in the morning and I'm in the future. I is like in the evening over here. So that's why I've got the energy. Why, why are you rushing? <laughs> I don't know. Is this the time of... Is this, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, Kule, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, crazy times, honestly, but yeah starting to feel better you know about um everything you know it's it's just it's been crazy honestly but yeah i'm trying to stay ahead of everything and then just be good basically mm. and what ways are you doing that like how are you allowing your mind to be in a, a good space despite everything that's going on because we do look around left right and center across the globe in different countries there's like chaos talk less of this pandemic, talk less of anything. How do you allow your mind to be in a space where you can be good? Intentionally, that's what I just intentionally, like just being um, distracted, you know, recently. Like last week, like two weeks ago and three weeks, like a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't do that because um, if you want to relax and then you just go on social media, there's something on, on there that upset you, you know. Yeah, even as everything is dwindling down now, right now, yeah, you still see something that you just find like very crazy. You just think it's crazy. So what I've been doing really has been um, making more music. You know, I mean, you know how I do. That's what that's what I do. Make more music because at least that one thing takes my mind away. I play with my my baby, and then just take make sure that I have like quality time with my family because at the end of the day. They, they, they are the ones that matter to me. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, you go, on some, you go on social media, I see something that's very upsetting. Just like, not again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, I hear that completely. Um, but I want to take it back a little bit. Take it back to when you first started your musical journey, your musical career, and how you stumbled, not really stumbled, but how you came across the name Ade Kunle Gog. Because we know your name is Ade Kunle, but where did the gold come from and how did that come about? Um, I feel like I want, I was, um, I called my, myself all sorts of names, honestly. Embarrassing names that I can't even mention. Yeah, Can you mention at least one? Mention one. Mention one. Yeah. No? Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> but yeah, um, I was in, uh, I was in, I was in, um, in a gathering when when somebody was preaching in a church setting. Child. Somebody was preaching, and then the guy kept saying like, "You can't use brass for gold," and it just, and I, I get inspired like in the in the list by like by the little list of things you know like the way i get like that creative sparks i can't explain it so i could just see a word and then it just means a lot to me you know so i just thought you know what yeah this might just be my name you know I mm. and because it just it sounds at, at that point it sounded very good you know? I, just, I didn't say I, I didn't even think too much I just say you know that's this, that's what i'm going to start calling myself and it stuck it's and stuck it's is that when you had already kind of found your groove in your in your music and your style, or is that before? Oh, before. That was before. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, some would consider your music to be your your music genre to be high life. Would you consider it to be such? And then for listeners that might not know what high life music is, can you kind of give a 
give a little... first of all, I, don't, I, I think my my if you would put my music anywhere now you would um i think it's right to call it afro pop now right mm-hmm. when i started out it was um more high life and high life being that it is um it is uh, made up of um local instruments you know the talking drum the congas of the world you know um um like heavily influenced by guitars you know bass guitars and, and then they can't the, the groove alone makes it high life you mm. know it's not it's not a normal rush rush type music the tempo yeah. so to it just makes you want to feel good and that's what that's what high life is basically yeah mm. um but when i was doing my one it was um i called it urban high life because i i thought what i what i brought to to high life was a lot more it it was a bit more pop you know mm-hmm. so that's why i called it urban high life but then i messed it up myself <laughs> by releasing another project entirely and that's because i feel like i never wanted to be um in a, in a box of any sort you know like yeah i can wake up tomorrow and say you know, i decide i, I want to do i want to make rap music mm. you, yeah. Yeah, would you drop like a you would drop like a grime album or something like really? you could. Drew, drew music <laughs> drew music <laughs> no <laughs> i think you could to be honest if you wanted to i'm sure you could tap into it and create some drillish yeah. i don't I think mean, it's your Die or, you know, I just don't want to be restricted in any way. I just want to make music, you know, enjoy myself, and then, yeah, yeah. And speaking of you, just wanting to make music, who would you say were your greatest or your most musical inspirations that you've listened to growing up and even till now? Growing up, definitely um, Ebenezer Bay, King Sonia the yeah, um, those two people. They, they definitely influenced me then. But then when I started to look for pop music myself, I listened to, I mean, I was grown already. Yeah, I listened to a lot of um, the script. The script, um, um, Man 5, Bruno Mars, you know, yeah, them people. And so they, they kind of influenced my songwriting, you know, to find a way to merge my highlight background and then the pop side, you know. And that's why I even have like, Urban High Life as my genre back then. That's why I make gold and then about 30, basically. And do you feel like looking at the evolution of your musical style and your musical taste from the first album to the current album, was that always the trajectory that you was going to go to shift from high life to pop or did that just happen by chance as you were like feeling the music? You know, I always wanted to make pop music. I didn't even want to do high life at all. Okay. Remember, like as far back as um, twenty eleven, when I when I released when I was in a boy band called The Bridge, The Bridge, uh, it's me and my best friend Michael. That's now my producer. You know, we we're, we we're, were called The Bridge. We we're making. I was a songwriter. I was more the producer. So I always wanted to make pop music. Always wanted everything I'm doing right now. I've always wanted to do like a long time ago. But you know how. Sometimes you need to grow in something, you know, mm. to be better you now before sometimes before it now begins to look good for you. When I was trying it back then, like in 2011, 2012, it wasn't really working because first my songwriting wasn't even anything. It was just it was just vibes and inshallah, honestly. <laughs> I, was just, I was just putting bare words together and then that time it made a lot of sense to me. I listened to them recently. I'm like, ah, hell fucking no. There's no way I wrote this one, you know. But hey, um, I was trying so hard that I wanted to be a pop star by all means back then, I remember. But it wasn't working. And then I tried High Life in 2013. And that's when um, I, I wrote songs like Shade, Rente. And it worked yeah. out. And I enjoyed it, you know. But I knew that someday I was going to still go back to the pop. And I'm there now, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. it was always pop for me. I wanted to look just like I wanted to make songs that would um that had some some type of energy, you know, like songs that because I knew I knew that I, could, I knew that high life was easy for me to make because I I, I I listening to high life like it was easy. If you want me to do it in English, if you want me to do it in another language, I would I would do it. You know, it's just 
that's easy. But what is more challenging for me? Let me do that. And that's that's pop for me. And then it's now now it's so easy for me now. Not to even brag, but it's so easy for me. I'm like, okay, what is next? Rap. <laughs> That's the hardest one. I don't know. <laughs> no, we spoke about is the drill. The drill's gonna be next, and you're gonna call it AG drill, maybe. I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> Shall <No>. I do? <laughs> <laughs> but speaking about pop, congratulations on your new album, Afro Pop Volume One. Listen, when it drops, yeah, I was just like, damn. How, this guy, he can't even make any bad songs. I was just like, skin. And that's not because, like, in my G, whatever, just saying that. <laughs> it's because you're actually really good at what you do, which is really <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah. um, so, talk to us about the process of making Afro Pop Volume One because you've already said it was not like uncharted waters, but it was always something that you wanted to do, but it was a little bit more of a challenge coming out of the comfort zone that is high life and all the urban high life that you were doing before. So, talk to us about the process of making Afro Pop Volume One. So, um, when I finished, when I released Gold, the first album, I knew that I wanted to do something different. Pun intended. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I knew I wanted to do something entirely different from gold. So my first attempt at Afropop really was Call on Me. I wrote Call on Me. And um, I wanted to I wanted to see how people were going to respond to it. Right? Mm-hmm. So I decided, you know what? Coming from um, a high life album, right? Let me see how people will respond to this new vibe. Let me even see if it will be like a failure on or arrival or just people will just love it. I was so scared. I'm not going to lie. But I was going to be afraid anyways. Like, what's the worst that will happen? Mm-hmm. I can't log anyways. I can go back to high life at any point. But let me even try. Then I released Color Me. It didn't really catch on at first. People liked it, right? But it didn't really catch on at first. Need somebody. Come on, if you're feeling free. Oh, sorry, sorry. Being a fan. I want you. Yeah, so I released Call on Me. It didn't really catch it at first, but then it started to work. People people started like to feel it. Like Call on Me was bigger than, I mean, as far as streams, did way more numbers than my biggest song on Gold. Mm-hmm. That's when I'm like, okay, maybe this is not bad. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So I'm like, okay, this is, I, was, I, I wasn't going to put it on Afropop anyway. I was just going to make, the next album was going to be an upgrade from Gold. Right? Gold was more high life. About 30, I wanted it to be like a bit more pop. So that's why I wrote um, Call on Me. I wrote Fame. I wrote Surrender. I wrote, uh, what else? Yeah, um, I can't remember right, right now. So Afro, About 30 was going to lead into Afropop. When I wrote Gold, I knew that my next album was going to be about 30. Mm-hmm. I removed some songs from Gold so that I would make them appear on about 30 to tell a better story. Right. While I was making about 30, I already had a name for Afropop, November 2017. So it's everything has been intentional. I knew that I knew what I was getting into. I just wanted to grow into it myself, be more confident, you know. And then be a lot more fearless to even just try to dare anything, you know. That's so. And then, I mean, I wrote the songs. It was supposed to be like a few song EP, but then I started to write more songs. I was supposed to just release like, I think it was just supposed to be like four songs, but then I wrote 10 songs. I wrote 20, 30. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Whole album then. And I'm sorry, I said, you know what? Because I know that people's attention span now is like shortening every day. I don't want to release all 20 songs. Let me split into two. So Afropop 1, which we released like two months ago, and then 2, which will be dropping very soon as well. So Are you yeah. going to give us the, the exclusive date, the exclusive drop? Is that what this is? I don't have an exact date yet, honestly. Okay. Okay. Know. Mm-hmm. Got you. Well, what's your what was your fa- what's your favorite record on the album? Like, which one was the the best to make or the easiest to make, and which one gave you the most? On Afropop, the easiest to make was. I feel like something different is one of them, because you're cheeky. How can you say that was the easiest to make? Do you know how sick that song is? Don't annoy me with your ability right now. Allow it. 
I how, promise can, how can you just say the easiest, easiest to make was something? What? So, something different was easy to make. Okay, was definitely easy to make. How I made something different, I was in, um, I was chilling with Ricardo, Ricardo and a producer. Ricardo had like bare producers in the house, right? So we're just vibing. So, and then, so he played, the producer played the beats. And then I, I took the microphone and then I was just recording like, so the verse, the, I don't tire for play, play, I recorded all, melo- all the melodies straight, like one take. Wow. And I just did it. So Ricardo recorded the melodies as well, right? So we just let the song. So I was supposed to release, I was supposed to release Lego first. Mm-hmm. Lego, I, um, I'm sorry, I said Lego. The title was Lego before, pretty girl. Oh, that's my favorite song, guys. Yeah. Hey, pretty girl. Well, <laughs> sorry. No, okay. so pretty girl first, right? But, so I was just looking through my laptop and I'm like, what song do I even, because I do that all the time to look for beats that producers have sent me that I've not worked on. Then I stumbled on something different. I'm like, wait, this song is actually sick, you know? Let me finish the song. Then I put words together and I, I mean, I finished the song and I'm like, so guys, yeah, I'm not, I'm not releasing Pretty Girl, no, no. I want to release this one first. I thought I was crazy. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to release. And then it became a smash. Then mm-hmm. AG Baby, mm-hmm. I promise you, I think that's even easier. Really? No, on it, no, I'm not even being cocky now. No, no <laughs> this guy has been sending me beats for like, like it sent bare beats to me, but I've not, I've not really done anything about it because I wasn't really feeling them like that. But then the night I sent this one to me, I just got on my computer, I just, the song was supposed to be called Ice Cream Man for some weird reasons, I don't, I don't know. I you like ice cream? To... No. But I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was going to like, say like some raunchy things like, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're growing, man, isn't it? Like I get. Wait, what does that mean? That's stupid. No. <laughs> so, so I called the age group, and then again, I told my team, "No, no, pretty girl. Now it has to be age baby." Okay, Kunle, what do you want? Just drop my song, you know. And then I immediately <laughs> baby, and I decided, you know, uh, pretty girl, much after, you know. So okay was easy to write as well because I was at. I was literally like in um, on the balcony of um, one Airbnb that I got in uh, Miami, and I was just that day. I was really chilled. I had nothing to worry about, and I wrote the song. If I'm being honest, this album was. Right. You said the album was being honest. It was, it was the album was easy to write. It was easy to make. That's how you know you're just an artist, like an artiste. When these <laughs> just, <laughs> and you know, the, what's the you at the exactly, end? Exactly, exactly. No, that's it, that's it. And you said like it was easy for you to make this album and not to make you choose or whatever, but which one, I'm not gonna ask which one's your favorite, but which song means the most to you and why? Mm, I think, um, okay. Okay, because of how I wrote it. Okay, because I gave it out first. I gave the song out to to another artist and then uh, my manager fought me for it like what i'm like mm, i can make i can make more songs you know mm. because yeah but then i took it back and look at look at look at life yes it's, <laughs> it's one of the biggest songs right now the album it's actually like i think it's the most loved right now so mm. yeah it means a lot to me i, I really and like you just it. dropped like a fire video for it is what i was just saying yeah I know. and then the fact that um I, I like I like what I said in the song, you know. I like the lyrics. I like how, yeah. I just didn't I just didn't care. I, I, just, I was just yearning my my stuff on the song. So, I think that's 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 the most personal one to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I love that. And we spoke earlier about the meaning behind Adi Kone Gold, right? And the evolution that you've gone in terms of your artistry from genre to, not genre to genre, but it's, you've been evolving. You've been evolving and evolving. And you've now gone from Adi Kone Gold to AG Baby. Mm-hmm. And you say you're feeling more like AG Baby these days. How does AG differ from Adi Kone? First, AG is the drag guy. <laughs> <laughs> The Dura guy, like, look at me, look at my gear. BC, when you knew me, I had like, <laughs> this place was bland, no? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit. Uh, I feel like H- H- Baby is more confident, basically. 
I'm not trying to separate both people. I'm, I'm the same person. I'm not, I'm adequately good. At it. It's just, yeah, some days I just feel like, but I feel like generally I'm, I'm more confident now to even do anything, grow my hair out, you know, and then eat my beard, you know, wear, like I, I got piercing the other day. You know. Wow, you're really becoming, wow, you're really just flexing on us. I like it. I like it. And, and I'm just okay. Sorry, yeah. no, I was, I was going to say, I'm curious, where did that confidence come from? Did it come with age? Did it come with you, you know, getting more into your craft and finding your groove? Yeah, where did that, where did you get that from? I feel like it, it came Sorry. from realizing that I just needed to leave, you know, for a long mm -hmm. time. I've, I've had to um, limit myself, you know, mm -hmm. like I believed in the, you know, I was, intentionally like I, I would um, reduce myself for some just just because just because I wanted to appear humble that's not to say I'm not humble you know I don't, very think, humble. I don't think that I don't I don't even think that I need to try to be it's just natural but you know I feel like I didn't I didn't I didn't say it was on my mind for a long time you know I didn't I didn't act out the way I wanted to I didn't wear what I wanted to wear you know yeah. for a long time just be just because of um some societal things you know just yeah you know how if you grow up in a, in a certain way where your everything is suppressed yeah like it carries on like and then you just become you don't know you don't even know who you are you don't you, you don't you don't leave i tweeted the other day i said my life started at 30. i feel like that's when i began, began to look at life differently like what is the worst that will happen if you do this thing yeah like what is the worst they can't come and beat you anymore. <laughs> One of the things I regret in my life is if I look back and I don't and I don't do all of the things that that at some point I fantasize doing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. I, want to, I want to look back someday when I cannot do all of this, when I cannot struggle for anything anymore to say, you know what, I lived. I feel like that's that's one of the things that made me, you know what, that that, that made me feel like, you know what, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. If I think of getting a piercing today, I'm going to get it. Why, why not? You know? Yeah. I want to do it. You know, okay. I want to get a tattoo tomorrow. I want to do it. You know, if I want to make rap music tomorrow, I want to do it. That's it. And that's how you live. Mm. I love that. I love that. Everybody says, uh, you know, 30s is lit and I'm 25. So I'm just like, okay. I'm ready. Y'all got me hype. <laughs> No, I love that. I love that. And I was as you were speaking, I was thinking, rah. So you've now got your ears pierced. If you want to get a tattoo, you could get a tattoo. Your hair is grown out. You've got a beard. You've even got beads in your hair at times. You wear a do rag, right? And you can do that, right? But we've seen in Nigeria, and we all had this whole the ensars saga the reality not even a saga is a reality that existed that still exists till this day and people that are out there with tattoos or piercings they could literally lose their lives because of police brutality and you were very very vocal at the height of the protests um can you talk to us a little bit about what the ensars movement meant to you um what you think about the protests and also what you think about the government's response to everything that went on first of all like, it breaks my heart to think that um, where the world is right now, the age of the world, the kind of problems that we face in Nigeria are so basic. Mm. And they're so, like, like in the grand scheme of things, like, we're still, like, in the, like, the pre-elementary stage. It's crazy. It's crazy that you think that somebody growing their hair out is, um, is, is a crime. Because mm. basically, that's what they make it seem like. Yeah. You 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 drive a car as a young person and then you're profiled already. Yeah, to be a first star. Um, before I became um privileged like this, you know, um the bad times that these people will stop me on the road, you know, to just check your phone. Go forbid that they find a national number on your phone, you're dead. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So they will find like because I I was a graphic artist right and I I I, I had a lot of um, customers outside of the country you know and I'm talking about like 2012 2011 12 ish where I would literally get people uh, hit me up via my Facebook to say you can you help me design this logo 
and even design this flyer, and most of them are outside of the country. People were ready to invest back home, invest in the talent back home, you know, because I was doing this thing and I was killing it. And then I was making money from, from somebody that just left the school that I hadn't got, gotten a job, you know, and this was how I was spending for myself, getting to design website for people back, back home and at home and then abroad, you know. So I was, I was really doing it. And then this was how I was feeding myself and then taking care of my siblings and my family, you know. But then you go out on the road to go, maybe to make a transaction at the bank. Sometimes they send, they send like empty uh, Western Union to me, you know, for payments. Mm -hmm. Because it was not as easy as just sending. There was no, there was yeah. really having all these apps that you could just send money easily back then. So it was literally Western Union. But because certain set of people have um, ruined the reputation of just getting money from Western Union. You know what I mean? Like by the Yahoo boys and all that. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they automatically just think that as a young person, you, if you, if you get like payment from Western Union, you're, you're a first star. Mm. Okay. So even if, when you explain to say, yo, I did a design and I showed you, I show, I'm showing you my email the correspondence, you know, I'm showing the transaction, what led to why I'm getting paid in dollars or pounds or whatever. Mm -hmm. You still intentionally want to victimize me, take me to your station. They will force you to write a statement that you're a foster. If you don't do it, they will be very, they will pounce on you and then they will beat the shit out of you. You know, they'll do also to you, like intimidate you that you would have to write it. I mean, if you write a statement, it's your word. You've, you've said it already. How do you how do you say how do you escape saying, oh yeah, they made me do it? You know what I mean? So yeah. all of these things happened to me. Right. Even when I became at the Kunle Gold and they stop you on the road, they oh do ah Kunle Gold, ah far, give us something, something. I'm like, I don't even want to. It's sad that I, that, I, that I have to enjoy such so, so privilege where they will let me go because of me. You know, what about the person that doesn't have a name? You know, young people should be allowed to just do, to just, just leave. This is the, we are asking for the nucleus of things, you know? Like we have too many challenges. There's no 247 lights. Like, I don't even want to go into the problems, the, the many problems that we have. But all we asked for this time was stop killing us, right? And then we're killed even more. You know how, you know how messed up that is? Yeah. For some of us, for some of us in the industry, you have, you have money, you can, you, can, you can buy your way out, you know. If you have your name, you can buy your way out. But what's the fraction of people that have these things? Little compared to like millions of youths on the road. If you know how many people are, are, are in prison right now just because a policeman searched their phone and then they saw, they saw the word client, they take them to the station charge them and because they cannot pay their way out of it mm -hmm. it is crazy what is going on in nigeria is crazy it's, it's crazy and it broke my heart to even see that at the height of it like there was a massacre in like in is i don't even want to go see now that that really that really took it took a toll on me and i can't i don't think there's there's getting back there's there's getting out of that thing of yeah. the same time, I remember how I was watching on somebody's live. I was at a mechanic here, and then I was just watching somebody's live, and I'm like, hearing gunshots, hearing, looking at young people trying to take out bullets from somebody's leg. It was, it was very upsetting. It's, it's disgusting. It's sad, and it's. Yes. I mean, the system works the way that they intended to work, and I think it's. Thank God for social media because. You know, otherwise it's he said, she said versus, you know, a government that carries weight and somehow has has just worked for for those who it's intended to work for. Mm -hmm. um, there was an outpouring of support from people in, in the diaspora. You know, I went to a vigil here in L.A. and I saw that there was, you know, meetups everywhere. Um, what are ways that people can continue to support? I mean, I, I think at this point, SARS has ended. SWAT was uh, created. I'm not sure if it's if it still stands but what are different ways that people can still support you know after it's not mainstream news anymore you know i feel like um one of the things that really helped was just speaking up for 
for Nigerians, you know, like I'm talking about people in diaspora, it really helped because it, it brought uh, the world's attention to what's going, what's going on, right? Thing is, we need to keep talking. Right now, their agenda is to um, regulate social media. I don't even know if the word is regulate or totally ban it. Yeah, the social media bill. Yeah, so ima- yeah imagine like in the world, <laughs> in, in this century that we are in, the government is actively trying to shut people off. You know, talk about so now, right now, what we're fighting is making sure that they don't ban the social media because this is one way that we've been able to pass our message across to the world. If they shut that down, well, it's really fucked, you know. So, people to keep talking about it, we're still talking about it every day. The answers, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the vibes that some, some more people like are still trying to go out to protest and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like everybody should keep, still keep talking about it. You know, there, there, there are things that have been happening lately. Like they see, so, they see somebody's passport right now. They froze like 20 people's accounts in Nigeria. You know, so these are things that we still need to keep talking about. You know, if somebody raises a concern on social media and people are talking about it, once you, I mean, once you verify that the, the source is true, I think people should still talk about it, you know. So, yeah, this is, this is how you can help. And then I'm sure that there are, there are organizations that are, that are in charge of um, helping people that are victimized, you know. Yes, you can make donations to them. That would be helpful as well. For sure, for sure. And I think the, the main reason why we're even fighting is for the next generation. I mean, of course, for ourselves, but yeah. for the next generation to have the freedom and the, the luxury to, again, the basic human right to just live. And so, you know, luxury shouldn't be something that is antagonized. Like, you know, yeah. people have worked to have iPhones, to have their MacBook. You know, you were working, you were, you know, fresh out of school, doing your designs. You you should be allowed to have um, these you nice should, You should be allowed to have hair if you want to have hair. You should be allowed. Yeah, it's your body. Like, yeah, you should be allowed. It should even be up for discussion. It's, like, basic. Yeah, it's, um, like I said, like, it, it's crazy that we're here. It's crazy that this is what Yeah, well, well, of course, let, you know, lending endless support to those on the ground fighting. Um, but to, to move on to something lighter, um, want to say congrats on your beautiful family. I stalk you guys on Instagram. I am obsessed. I think it was the the picnic pictures. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> they go. Baby is a they, oh, my <laughs> gosh. Just beautiful. Um What's it like being married to another music celebrity, somebody in the industry, and how has being a father impacted your life and, and just how you make music and the types of music that you make? You know, as much as people, you, you guys see it as being married to somebody in the industry, I see it as just being married to someone that I love, you know? like somebody that I'm in love with, my friend. And then that's, that's, I think that's, that's, like most times I even, like I don't, Subconsciously, I don't even think that she's an artist. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. So, and being a dad, the best thing. Being a girl dad, the best thing. Like, it feels good to know that um, I'm responsible to raise another powerful woman. Woman, you know, like mm-hmm. a woman that will wake up, that will grow up to be very confident to know that she's allowed to lead. You know, she, she, she's in total control of her body. You know, yeah, and then to to know that she can go anywhere unaccompanied, you know, like hopefully the world is seen by by them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I'm just happy to know that I have um I have such responsibility to raise a great woman. It feels good. That's so beautiful. And do you feel like um how how old is baby girl? Oh, she's five months. Five five, yeah. five months. So she was born right after pandemic popped off here in the US. I don't know when um things shut down if you are you guys based in houston or in lagos or well we're, we're based in lagos okay i'm working here that's why okay well my question is how has the pandemic affected um like y- you kind of during learning what fatherhood looks like and feels like i guess obviously it's nice because you're able to spend more time with her yeah i feel like that's that's what's done for me um if if there was no pandemic i'll just be everywhere in the world just flying about probably in London today, like, you know, but this, this time has given me, like, is opened my eyes to a lot of things that's more important in life, you know, family is one of them, 
you know, uh, especially if you if you're currently in like a country where you have to do everything by yourself, you know, um, you buy you buy a table, you have to fix it yourself. You know, <laughs> you just buy, you just buy, I mean, you can literally pay your way through everything, you know. But here, you better do your thing yourself. You know? so, so I feel like it, it's helped with bonding, you know, with your family, like yeah. imagine having to install a whole chair, like a chair, like a sofa by yourself. It feels good, you know. So. Um, not being able to move about anyhow has given me the opportunity to be with my family every day. I've seen, I've seen my wife every day since the pandemic. You know, yeah. I've seen my baby every day since, since we, um, since we gave it to her. You know, so it's, it feels good. Um, I, I love the idea of family even more now. You know, yeah, it's, um, it's a great feeling. Honestly. I think that's. Yeah, but it, it feels good to know that uh, my family is about priority. Yeah. That's no, so lovely. It's absolutely lovely. Like, I'm like, yeah, here for it. Like, I want to play a violin. I just I know. <laughs> the roses and the petals and the sun. Everything is just, like, so rosy, and I absolutely <laughs> love it. But I have a question, right? So, obviously, you're, like, AG baby, Adikone Gold, and obviously, like, mum's, like, Simeon, and, like, she's, like, the greatest songbird ever, right? And you've got this beautiful baby girl. She's surrounded. I'm sure you guys sing, you c- compete to sing lullabies at night, right? I'm sure you guys do. In the shower, there's music here, there's music there. Like, it's just, like, amazing, right? If um, Deja grows up and she doesn't want to do music, how would you feel about that? So happy. <laughs> You'd be happy? Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Why? yeah. I mean, the, the pressure that comes with living this kind of life is so much. You yeah. know, I don't want, I don't, if she wants to do it, by all means. If she doesn't want to do it, by all means, I, I'll be so happy. You know, I'd rather. I mean, personally, personally. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to make a decision for her, right? But I'd rather she she does even something that's more, more. You know, like that's that she wants to do. Basically, if she decides she wants to be in the UN, for example, she wants. You know, just anything that's that that helps humanity more is is fine. Mm. Yeah. That's not to say what we're doing is not good, but I'm just saying like I don't want any pressure for her at all. Oh, that's interesting. I would have thought that you would be like, nah, she needs to carry on the legacy. Right. We got this music is in the family, it's all throughout your yeah. children, children, children shall do music. No? Nah? That's too much pressure. You release yeah. something and then somebody will call call you whack and then you watch your child go through next. Nah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, look at Daddy already being protected. I know. Oh, he was like, no, this is your thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, we can literally speak to you, like, forever. And I feel like just speaking to you, seeing your growth and everything, not, it's just it's just awesome. The fact that you're just, like, awesome. It's just, like, even more awesome. And we can just spend time <laughs> with you awesome. It's just, it's just everything about this is awesome. I absolutely love it. I'm being animated again. You don't like it. Let me bring it back down for a second. <laughs> to be serious, <laughs> what would you say has been the greatest lesson that you've learned throughout your years of life that has impacted you the most? Mm. Hmm. The greatest lesson I feel like, I feel like I said it already. It's, um, I feel like people should just leave. Mm. It's, it's, it's such a broad thing to think about. Like the joy you get from doing what you want to do, knowing, even knowing that people are for it, right? The joy you get from just doing it is a lot. You can't buy it. I think like n- the reason I'm more confident now is because I've realized that I should just live my life. In the grand scheme of things, like. Growing my hair out, for example, does not change the world. It doesn't stop anything in the world. You know, I'm allowed to just do it. You know, in the grand scheme of things, I don't even matter in the world. So why? Why? Mm-hmm. Let me just be. Just let me just live my life, you know. And let me just be. Let me just live your life. So I've, I've learned that you just need to leave. Whatever you have on your mind to do, if you can afford to do it, do it by all means. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to go, by all means go there. You know, they regret you. Like if you don't do all of these things, you you just be you just one day just break down from from the sadness that you didn't even get to do it. 
Mm. Life is short. Yeah, it's just it's me. I love that. I love that. And I think you were talking earlier about how at the end of the day, when the sun comes down, you just think and say, you know, I need. I feel like that's yeah. that should be that should be one of life's greatest achievements. And it's so underrated, it's funny. Heck yeah. It's so easy to spend a lot of time overthinking. Like you were saying, you know, culturally, it's like there are certain things as Africans, it's like, you know, for you to have your ear pierced, it would, you bet it would have been, you know, a debate in the house. Mom would have kicked so, you out. When I was getting my ears pierced, I was seeing my spirit, my parents scream at me like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you know what? I don't care. Yeah. Everybody's dad now so they can chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, well, you have you have one life to live, and I think you know I'm 25, and I'm just now realizing you just have to live. You know, yeah. fuck what anybody yeah. else has to say because people are always going to have opinions. So I yeah. think if I could have unlocked that like 10 years ago, I mean, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for everything. Yeah. 10 years ago, when you're 15, what are you lo- what are you unlocking there? Listen, I know, I know. <laughs> See, this is me overthinking again. Um, <laughs> Age, okay, as we as we kind of wrap up, do you have any words of encouragement for the youth, for your fans, or just anybody uh, looking to follow your path? You've been making music since you were 15, and now you're killing it, you know, years later. So what advice do you have or encouragement for people wanting to kind of uh, follow suit? First of all, I'll say don't follow my path. It's my one. <laughs> mm. Create your own, you know. It's um, like, just, you can't go wrong, you know. You can't go wrong, just living your life. Just do your thing, right? Be, um, and as far as um, young people, I feel like we need to be more responsible now, you know, just like we literally own the world, the world. I mean, what do you want to, what do you want to make of this world, you know? Um, and I've been saying recently, men, brothers, we need to do better. <laughs> I want to see a world where you don't have to teach a, ch- a girl child to be careful, you know. I want to see, I want to see a world where everybody's just responsible, you know. Um, yeah, and then as far as um, Nigerian youth, everybody need needs to understand the constitution now, because if you don't even know what the country says about you, like how do you fight for when yeah. um, you know, like what is what is obtainable where. You know, you like for just understand the constitution a lot, then learn the history. This is something that we've been deprived of. How do you know where you're going if you don't know where you're coming from? It's crazy. Let's even understand why we're in this mess that we're in. You know, how to move forward. If you understand where we're coming from, we know how to move forward. If you understand the constitution, you know what to fight fight against. You know what to kick against when they bring some bullshit to you. You know, yeah. And generally, just leave again. Okay. Leave, leave. It's important. Live your life. <laughs> and that's it. Like everyone, live your life. People that are watching this, please don't mind anybody else. Just live the life you've been blessed to have. Um, thank yeah. you so much, Kunle. Like it's honestly been, I'm not gonna say amazing again because I've said it before, but like it's been fantabulous speaking to you <laughs> with your fantabulous self. And this shirt, I'm definitely coming to steal it. Um, yeah, just enjoy your day. Yeah, what what, what, what do you I'm for me, but like you have like I'm, I'm coming you have... to get your whole wardrobe. But like honestly, <laughs> if you was in London, you would have no clothes. You'll go and buy new ones, and then when you buy it, I'll take those ones too. I'm sorry, I'm taking your clothes. Um, no, but honestly, it's been amazing, and thank you so much for sharing your story, talking to us about your family, and just your opinions, and just being with us right now. We appreciate your time. We value you, and yeah, man, you're dope for real. Yeah. Thank you, thank and we're G's you. now, so it's, it's a it's a gang yep. thing. Just so you know, yep. there we are. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank, you, thank, you, thank, you. thank you so much, and enjoy your day. Thank you.